Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Let me bring chat up. It's your favorite apostates. I'm McKay. I'm Jordan. Welcome back on this wonderful Tuesday evening. It's Tuesday, right? Well, you got yeah. my charger. It's Tuesday. Oh, no, I rolled it over. I rolled over it. Yeah, so nobody is late because I was late. I, was, I had to fix my hair. And then I was having to navigate around this desk and everything. We're in a, a transitionary... Is that a word? It's hot down here. Yeah. Transitionary stage of trying to get rid of this sofa and getting rid of the desk that normally our stuff sits on. So we're trying this, and we really liked this, so now it's going to be hard to beat. And I'm, I've got to think about how it we're going to do it because I don't want to be far away from the screens anymore. It hurts my eyes and I hate it and I can't see. And I can't read. Yeah. So I want to have the monitors on this desk, but I also like what we've got going on here. So transitional. Thank you, Rory. I'm done. Is the video feed too dark? I haven't had time. I totally forgot to re goof with it. How does it look on their end what are you talking about oh it's meant to be dark because i don't want to be washed out anymore so <laughs> jordan show off the new nails let me get a close-up hold on hold on hold on jordan's gonna show off the fresh set new shout nails out to jordan's today. art nail artist i gotta readjust this now that we've moved things around if you're in Colorado and Boom. need a nail artist, hit me up. I will send you her info. She's lovely. I have bows on my middle fingers. So. Dang. That's the finger she shows me most often. <laughs> He's not lying. <laughs> we flip each other wanna, off I often. do want to. It's just a matter of time until Kazoo picks it up. Which it's is kind of kind of scary. What do we have here? Mary Quite Contrary. Welcome to the Telestial Kingdom. That does bring up a good point to talk about before we start also it's kind of nice i don't know about the couch thing because the kitties are they enjoy it if you watch this week's episode coming out tomorrow you'll find out how much they enjoy it and if you want to become a member or a patron i haven't posted it yet but i, I exported and uploaded bloopers from tomorrow's video you did it already i did it already oh i haven't even seen it <laughs> jordan hasn't even seen it i mean there was just a couple things at the beginning that you had missed um, but you've seen all those clips so and it's pretty funny it's full of the kitties um baloney being a little nuisance that also means as i'm going to remind you throughout this broadcast because i spent way too much time and effort on this mlm video because we scripted this video i decided to script this video mckay's not a fan of scripts but we decided i'm a to shitty reader and it shows so i wrote a script and our mlm video comes out tomorrow at two o'clock mountain time which is four eastern four eastern one pacific one pacific three central so Please watch it. Please love it. Please share it with everyone you know because this video has to do well or my mental health is going in the toilet. <laughs> so <laughs> let's just put it that way. Um, kazoo is not self-aware. He, he does not know he is a kazoo. No, he does not. Um, so, yeah, make sure that you watch it. If you're a member, if you want to be a member, you can watch it now. It is already uploaded. We uploaded it for members and patrons yesterday. So make sure. Otherwise, feel free to participate in the live chat yes, tomorrow. Yes, please feel free to participate in the live tomorrow. And then our video, we, Cece Suarez, another anti-MLM queen, did a video on Girl Defined and the Baird clan and actually interviewed Michael Mershon, who is Bethany's older brother. Should we brother. watch the teaser or the trailer? Yeah, we can watch the trailer. Let's bring the trailer up real quick. I didn't even think We are that. in that video. And so that will be out tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern. So which you means can find it's six o'clock my time and i'm stoked to watch it because she interviewed michael which i think is lovely um i gotta do it on so 
we will be watching that tomorrow so make sure you watch that i see some cc members in here who have already watched it and um are saying really good things about it so let's bring it in up thank you all for your kind words if you've watched the mlm video already trailer okay here we go Litterbox Heroes I haven't said they the, really the like trailer. the scripted approach. Worth the effort. Okay. Well, good, because I'm already planning our next scripted video. And well, that I sucks have, for have me. The script written. We'll have to figure something out for... I think uh, Elgato has a little, like, teleprompter thing that you can attach to your camera. Maybe we'll get that. Indeed. That might be a little better, because we're looking off to the side at a, a screen. Anyway. Michael is Bethany and Kristen's older brother of Girl Defined. Yeah, you might have to watch to find out on that one because it is a crazy story anyway without further ado let's throw this on here very important question because it's the last command that was given to us by the lord jesus he said go into all the world that all power is given to me in heaven and earth go into all the world and make disciples so the question is how do you know when you've made a disciple standards will be understood what a demon. and that's what we want to be able to have standards in music standards in our daily life standards in in all these areas of being here this week is knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that we have for every one of you the answer IBLP 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 had not equipped me to be a functioning adult in the world so the first thing I'll, I'll say about that is for me personally I ended up in counseling for clinical depression when I was a young adult that I was sheltered I was not encouraged to be sociable with anybody outside of our church which is very small I was ill prepared for the real world IBLP the Institute in basic Le basic life principles so it's an entire it was an entire movement started by Bill Gothard we were never members we were never deeply ingrained in the program we never did any Welcome of the curriculum Michael, before we get started, I do just want to say thank you so much for letting me be a part of you breaking your silence and sharing your story with the world and really exposing what it was like not only growing up in IBLP, but growing up in the Bard family cult as well. I can't honestly say that I had planned out or intentions of really sharing, but my mom being my mom just kept poking me and poking me and poking me and, you know, it was one of those things where it was one too many pokes and I just kind of lost it and I was like, all right, well, gloves are off, here we go. There wasn't really any other way I could think of to get them to pay attention other than kind of hit them, you know, the only place they care about, which is their social media. I'm so excited to watch this. This is crazy. Also, the, the trailer, my God. Lovely. I need to get with her and... She, I, I will pay her to <laughs> teach me some shit because so well put together, so well put together. So we are part of this, um, in some capacity. We haven't seen it yet, so make sure to hit that like button. By the way, yeah. Um. So we, there were also other lovely people interviewed in this, and so make sure that you are subscribed to her channel and make sure you are ready to watch that tomorrow morning um we are super excited and it's hopefully going to get all the attention it deserves because heidi um kirsten and bethany and michael's mother is just a horrible person and so this deserves to to be discussed so lisa m um yes girl to find is connected to bill gothard mm -hmm. and iblp they went um, to workshops yeah. that IBLP held, actually. What, what are they actually called? I don't Seminars remember. Seminars or something like something that? Something like that. We did a video where they responded to the documentary. The channel is Shiny Happy, Shiny Happy People. If you haven't seen that, it's on Amazon Prime Video, um, which is a um, documentary about um, the Duggars and their relationship with IBLP and IBLP as a whole and how that influenced the whole Duggar situation. Um so they responded to that and we did a reaction <laughs> to them responding to that and they really showed their asses well it and things just goofy. keep getting kind of more evil the more that yeah. michael talks C and so cc included um part of that um video we were reacting to in the trailer Indeed. So. 
So that being said, that's tomorrow in the morning. And then tomorrow in the afternoon, you can watch our MLM video. Yay. All the videos. Let's go. All the videos are happening. All the content's being made. We love to see it. We love it. Um, so that being said, watch out for that tomorrow. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you like this video. Um, yeah, I think that's it on updates. Yeah. I'm working on our next scripted video and I'm excited about it. So far, like tentatively, we'll probably put that one out at the start of next month. We might do something. Else. Oh, another. That's if we put it together and I can can't continue i don't want to i don't want to rush it i'm not rushing it but i was glad that we were able to do this having our our schedule the way that we have it now um it just made sense pushing it to this week that way we could get it up early for the members and everybody to see it a little bit early and have a little bit of time to generate some um some hype around it so there's that we're planning this is the plan. Jordan is going to like jump the gun and start going ham. But we have planned to do scheduled edited uploads the first Wednesday of every month. So that's why we're doing this one now. But as things come up, we definitely don't want to shy away from those. We for just example, do things as they happen. Basically. Yeah. For example, we've received a million DMs about the Jubilee Mormons versus ex Mormons uh, video. Correct. So we wanted to do a reaction to that. We would just normally do it on stream, but it's like 50 minutes long. And I feel like we will be here for, hours. we're going to be just between us. We're going to be adding a lot of commentary. So having chat and everything, it, it would just make it too long <laughs> for real. Lion so. at heart, having endo surgery tomorrow. Wishing you all the best. Mine is next month, actually. Yes, also. Next month? I thought it was April. No, it's March. Oh, my God. Um, So. Yes, Sims on Thursday. Sims on Thursday is planned. Same time. So, if you can't wait and you want to watch it early, become a member. And we'll you can go you now. Early. Luckily, Lion at Heart doesn't have to wait. Because they already are a already member. a member. Okay, so what What's do up, we Ye want to start with? Oh, I wanted to start with my... I have a little lore drop for you guys, courtesy of my Facebook memories. That made me cringe today. Who are we welcoming here? What did I miss? Maybe it was, I think just, it was just a delay. Anyway, let me bring that up for you. 12 years ago today... Let me bring this up big right here. Thank you to Jordan for, oh wow, this is a dog water photo. <laughs> Grainy as hell. That's a cell phone photo from 12 years ago if I've ever seen it. We'll throw this up here for you guys. Oof, there it is. So this is me and my siblings at a Romney for presidential candidate, candidate Mitt Romney who, if you are not from the United States or maybe didn't give a shit at the time, w is a Mormon, a very prominent Mormon. He was also the, I don't know if he still is. Was he the CEO or the founder of Bain Capital, a uh, venture capital company? Um, yeah, big money. He's also a descendant of the, of Herbal LeBaron, of uh, Chihuahua Mormonism fame fundamentalist mormonism the guy who was so evil so bloodthirsty that even brigham young was like you need to get the fuck out of utah <laughs> so anyway this is me in my little letterman jacket that i got because i got a letter in van someone says i say this with love your hair is better now <laughs> thank you i appreciate it i i what didn't have an identity back then i just i went to the binders full of women binders full of women oh sh yeah we hung out. Yes. Um, Mitt is retiring. He yep. He's still in the Senate for Utah, but he's retiring uh, this year. So his seat is up for, uh, for grabs by a Republican. Obviously, his constituents are like diehard 
red. And Utah, after the whole Trump debacle, doesn't really like Romney anymore. Oh, so I don't think he all, really had a yeah, choice all of Utah but to retire basically at this point. Regretted voting him in. So that was fun. Anyway, what else we got? Okay, so where do we want to begin? Do we want to begin with the... Uh, Mitt Romney does have, I think it was his grandfather, Marion G. Romney, was an apostle. Indeed. Um. Yeah, what do you want to start with? Do you want to start with the Reddit stuff? <laughs> sure. Don't is pull it, it up these yet. Ones? Don't pull it up yet. I won't. Okay. Um. So... I got two DMs this week specifically asking about Jordan Page updates. I don't have many for you. I check the Utah court exchange system with their names to see if either of them filed at least once a week. And um, I do this with other like ongoing court cases like Jody and Ruby and things like I'm just in the damn Utah court database all the freaking time now. Um, and luckily I have a lawyer friend who's able to decode some of these things so I know what I'm looking at. Shout out. So Plenty I thought, girl doll. huh? Yes. Plenty girl doll. Yes. Shout out. So the thing is we, everything with Jordan Page right now is pure speculation. The majority of the speculation is coming from people who have watched her historically for a decent amount oh, wow. of time and are seeing some, like some subtle, some not subtle changes in her content um that's kind of making it stand out do you want me to bring this up to kind of yes but you need to not have her kids faces in it oh god damn it so i don't know how to do that without me blurring it beforehand which i didn't have time to do yeah i don't have time for that and i don't want to show her i'll just read stream. it yeah i'll just read it to you guys so there are people more well versed in the jordan page universe and that is primarily going to be the jordan page snark subreddit right which we touched on last week, which yeah. I'm going to talk about again today, because apparently I feel the need to. And so um, we'll talk some Jordan Page updates. But first, somebody, I assume this is somebody who watches us because they were an hour and a half deep into our video from last time, um, where we were talking about Jordan Page. And so somebody went to the Jordan Page Snark subreddit and posted it posted like our video like a link to our video um saying that we had talked about jordan page now if you remember i bitched about the subreddit which i'm not going to retract but i will <laughs> give context for it okay so some subreddits operate different right than others right so some of them have tons of moderation lots of eyes on the subreddit at all times and there's multiple posts happening at all times like the a passenger snark sub is a good example they have more moderators so they approve people's posts often and then they will turn off the subreddit if they're not able to moderate at that time and then they'll reopen it back yeah. up again so there are multiple posts so when you're content creators like us and doing research and looking for things specifically some subreddits are easier to navigate than others Okay, if they have individual posts, traditionally, Espe especially when easier. it comes when we're we have the backdrop to compare to like the likes of Fundy Snark Uncensored, mm -hmm. which is a fair comparatively a much larger sub. Indeed. And getting around that and finding topics is like a breeze on that. It still takes time, but it takes less time, right? Yeah. Because I can specifically search for things. I can find things easier. There's a lot more. Versus there are some subreddits who keep everything in one massive post. So there's like a weekly post or a daily post and everything in regards to whatever the subject is goes on that. And so instead of having multiple posts to sort through, it's one giant post with the one that I was looking at today with 700 comments. Okay. This is a lot harder. <laughs> to read through it's a lot harder to find information in and i am not a day in day out jordan page snark watcher in fact most of the time i'm not i go to the jordan page snark sub to get updated information when i feel it's relevant and when it's needed and so we don't talk about her often because for me it's a pain in the ass to have to go through the subreddit yeah but apparently that was taken a little bit offensively by some people in the sub and i don't want to be offensive it is just my personal selfish preference as a content creator who's yeah. trying to save time okay so i don't want anybody to feel singled out like i'm a jordan page snark hater 
I mean, there are some highly opinionated people about us in that comment section, which is fine. But Go off. I don't want people to think that I'm like anti Jordan Page snark by any means. It's just obnoxious and annoying to me for my selfish content creator reasons. Yeah. So please don't take that personally. <laughs> like, yeah. I am not trying to offend anyone. Unfortunately, this we is are just us being short on time yeah. as not full time content creators. I'm a therapist full time. He's a stay at home dad. We have a toddler. Like this truly just comes down to us trying to preserve time where we are able. But apparently this was upsetting for some people. So I just wanted to put that out there that I don't have a personal vendetta against the Jordan Snark subreddit or the way that it's organized. Because if you only have one moderator or if you don't have yeah. time or if you don't want to sort through comments that you have like posts all the time, like I get it. Yeah. It's easier to have one post at a time. Like it makes sense to me. If, it, if that's the structure of your subreddit or if that's easier for you as the person who houses all of that information then go off. I'm just bitching about it for my own selfish reasons. So you can just take that with a grain of salt. Okay. And unfortunately, we are jack of all trades, master of none when it comes to snarking or like these snark subs and everything. Because some people, I mean, they dedicate and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, everybody has their hobbies. So if you dedicate your time to one subreddit or whatever, then you're going to have you're going to be more knowledgeable in that topic and better at navigating those things and then we come in and we're like um i know i've seen something about this i need to find some information it's tough it is and we don't it's not to say that the people in the subreddit aren't amazing sources of information because they yeah. are it's just time constraint really and here's some youtuber tea okay because I see people sometimes that are like, they get details wrong or they forget things. And I tell you, as a YouTuber, it's some of the most frustrating things to have to yeah. parcel through is when people make like, you forgot this or you didn't add this or you did this wrong or, and that's the only feedback we get about the video. Like I'm all for constructive feedback. We read yeah. hate comments all the time, like even on the channel. I personally don't from like, that are just stupid comments. But if they offer criticism, I'm willing to examine. I do, I love engaging. But some YouTuber tea is, I'm going to let you in on a secret YouTuber little secret here, everyone, is there are a lot of YouTubers who, are, who will purposefully misread information, say inaccurate things to fuel comment, comments for the algorithm. So... Oh, I, I see this I'm one. I'm just going to give you all that piece of tea. the time. I see this one in, in like shorts all the time. Like there's this one guy who does culinary content or whatever and every single video he completely intentionally butchers the name of an ingredient and without fail i go to the comments every single time and there's a thousand comments going it's tortilla not tortilla so like, guys this is the most obvious when you guys bait are of calling all time us, not you in our chat but others when you guys are calling us stupid and saying that we're dumb and we don't do our research Know that sometimes that might be intentional. And sometimes I can't include every goddamn thing yeah. in our videos. Because if I were, our videos would be five and a half hours long each. And nobody's going to sit through and watch that. You guys, people bitch about the length of our videos now. Do you think anybody would sit through and watch through if we got every single fucking detail that you've ever experienced as a religious Jordan Page snark watcher? No. No. We do our best. Yeah. Well, and it's also the crossover. Because our primary motive our primary content is not exclusively just snark and you know doing that thing and talking about these people it's also how those things relate to mormonism and how mormonism plays a part in the behaviors that we see exhibited by these influencers and and everything and oh you're oh thing. you're doing a video on mlms name every mlm Right. Name you forgot about this woman. one. You Name didn't talk about Jordan. Woman. You didn't do this. Like, it's every time. <laughs> and so this is part of being content creator. So we, you know, and we don't, like, the strategy that I just talked about that some YouTubers do, we don't do that. Like, when we I, yeah, forget I definitely information, don't. it's intentional. We forgot it or we didn't include it for a purpose. And so... Yeah. I just want to point that out is I know some people get really frustrated and I know that because I've spoken with other YouTubers who do this strategy. And so... We don't specifically do that, but it's an engagement tactic. Yeah. Like, 
hate people don't realize, like, haters, I'm giving you a tip here. Like, if you're a hate watcher, don't engage because you're fueling the algorithm. So if you're a Jordan and McKay hate watcher, don't comment <laughs> because you're helping our video reach more people is what I'm saying here. Well, and you're ruining your own algorithm. <laughs> And we don't purposefully misreport misinformation because how many times have you guys watched us in the Ruby and Jody videos where we've talked about how important it is to be critical of where you get your information, be intentional about like who you're watching, where they're getting yeah. it from, like talking about Daily Mail and sources and what's reliable and what's not. And we always try to go out of our way to make sure that when something is speculation, we're being clear about the fact that it's speculation. Yeah. So I'm just giving the hate watchers a tip. Don't do that because you're helping my video. Tip. Just a little tip. Just a little yeah. bit. Well, and, and there's also like the, I mean, it's it's a nuisance to sometimes go back and especially if you've already uploaded it, it's it's there. I'm not going to end up taking it down or anything. That's why I do also like the um, doing streams and everything because in real time we can get feedback and we can correct the record if necessary. Indeed. Whereas if we up upload something, it's out there and taking it down and everything for one little thing it's just it's just too much exactly. and you can't re-upload it or anything it's that was just so you just try to do your best so i'm not saying that you just have to like be easy on content creators and i'm not saying that you can't point out when things are wrong but i'm saying just be aware of the fact that we can't include everything and sometimes like whether it be for copyright reasons or trying to prevent litigation or doing those kinds of things like we're typically intentional if we don't include something and yes sometimes there are things we just don't include or that we just forget because we are not all knowing fucking human beings like i don't just like i can spend yeah. like even for people who've been watching jordan page for years i can spend like a month doing nothing but jordan page research like tip to tail nothing else and for you guys that have been watching her for decades we'll still not have enough information that you guys have it's just impossible. Yeah. So don't put that expectation on content creators that they have to get everything right and they have to know everything because it's just not realistic. We do our best and then we add information and we change information and do things if we need. So that being said, let's pull up this comment. <laughs> now that I've gone on my rant. Jordan's ranting, everybody. Okay, so this is the person that posted our video in there, which lovely cool love it thanks for sharing it and then they were this is just somebody in the subreddit sharing information this wasn't like a whole thread about this or anything this is the the weekly post yes right? correct um and then it, the person below it i think is someone who moderates i think they're the they're the moderator or the owner or, or yeah. whatever i'm not well versed in reddit so they've said, interesting that they said the sub doesn't like them because I barely remember them being discussed here. It probably appears barely for them because they don't internalize the horrible comments that you read, but I do, at least temporarily before I can get over them and push them out of my brain. Um, so when our Jordan Page video came out, we got a lot of critical comments yeah, from the Jordan like Page sub. Um, primarily like being we didn't cover enough primarily like we didn't include enough of her content and remember we were being very careful about covering Jordan Page because we've gotten information from other YouTubers about Jordan going after um, channels and things for content and yes there's some legality around that and we're very familiar with fair use and things but it's just a stress at that point in time in our lives that I didn't want to take on I was in grad school and that was just stress that I didn't want to take on on that time. So could we have done a way more in-depth video? Oh, 100%. But we didn't. But we still got good feedback from people on what we did do for the people who weren't familiar with Jordan Page at all. And that was our main audience. Not you people who are experts in Jordan Pageology. Okay? Like, that video was probably not going to appeal to you and is going to be very basic. But there was a reason for that. So then this person goes on to say, I'm also sorry, the female of the duo, which I'm sorry, anytime somebody calls someone else a female it is like the biggest red flag for me the female of the duo doesn't like the sub because it's one post a week lol i've always kept it that way because if you go to many other single subject snark pages you'll see that a lot of times people post very little thought as a standalone post and when there's a daily post if there's not much to talk about then things get very nitpicky so that's the reason lol which is completely valid reason if that's you know the reason that you maintain the sub the way they do but just for reference like there are other subs who operate differently who are easier to work through and that's not like 
shade to your sub like you're doing a bad job. It's just my personal preference as a content creator when it comes to research is this is a lot easier. So no disrespect for how you choose to operate yours. Like I completely understand that. I'm part of many other subreddits who have like, you know, no lazy posting, like no minimal effort yeah. posts. Like, and that requires moderation. And maybe there's not enough people to moderate and maybe they don't want to be spending that much time in the Jordan Page subreddit. I don't know. So they're they're not invalid in their reasoning here. And I respect that that's the way that they operate their sub and you know yeah. that's the way uh, they do it. The moderator I mean. section is empty, so I feel like they're, they're the, the, only, the one. only person they run the sub. Which would be a lot of freaking work given how many comments end up on these daily posts. Yeah. So that's just their preference and that's how they decide to run it and whatever. Don't love being called a female, but you know what? It is what it is. It is but what. this one I can just like I understand why they operate it that way now. It makes sense. Yeah. I'm not like this is just my preference. Come on, so a little. Ignore it if it doesn't suit you and you don't want to do anything different, then great. And then they added another post at the top of the daily post that I also screenshotted that I didn't send to McKay that was like, Thank you for everyone for all your like supportive feedback after the Jordan and McKay video. Like we just like absolutely destroyed yeah. them for having the subreddit this way. Um which was not my intent if it came across that way. Again, this is just my personal preference as a content creator. So. Let me put this out there because inevitably someone might oh, go no, for this. Um, don't, we're not like entitled, we're not entitled to any sort of, oh, you need to have more organization because no. I need to find this so I can do a video about it. No, that's not what I'm saying. This is coming from someone who's been a Redditor for... I don't even know how old my account is. A at this long point. time. 13 or 14 years or something. I've been on Reddit for a hot fucking minute. And most of the subs I interact with, actually, I, I would be willing to say, I do not interact with any subs that um, organize their shit like that. So I understand it's a lot of work. And, and, and you don't have like to change that. it for me. You don't have to give a shit don't about change. me or what yeah. I do or who I am or my opinions. Like, yeah, you literally we're just, don't. Griping, I'm just honestly. another human being. Okay, so just, just take that for right. what it's worth. But there was a comment under this that I'm not going to lie didn't like upset me, but it made it's me like, laugh. Damn, and there's what? been a com there hasn't wrong, been a comment that's made me like laugh laugh like this in a long time. Um I blurred out this person's name if you scroll down to this one. Yeah. I blurred out their name. Don't go try to find this person. Don't harass them. This is their opinion and they're entitled to it and they posted it on the internet, which <laughs> means I get to react to it. Can we, uh... Would you like to read it, or would you like me to? It's hate comments. I can read right? it. I'm, that, that's kind of like the name of the game for me. You read our hate comments all the time. Happy they read the comments on them here because they are useless in terms of credibility. Terms. No, creditability. Oh, creditability. Credit, I don't know what that is, but... Yeah. On subject, I might know more than the average viewers. Example, the Bucket List point. family. Back yeah. to my earlier point, you're you an expert, would I'm know not. more because you are more involved. Then you go make the video. Anyway, I can easily make a correction video on all the mistakes and false assumptions. They did zero research, and instead of helping false. their viewers understand the ugly truth behind a family that still pass as idealistic YouTube family, which they aren't, the parents are very toxic and take idiotic risks, laughing it off like that force bore ride in a storm to get the to their private five star island resort with no life vest or uh, kids on board Why is that? holy shit that was <laughs> this is my favorite Jordy and Mickey put no effort and have been very influenced by the chaotic style of DCP the only worthwhile thing from them is the interview with John Delin as he knows how to lead an interview uh, to make it make sense. Keep going. Which, I mean, sidebar, love John, you know, whatever. Sometimes he does feel a little chaotic. Yeah. We and love that, the guy. That, that is what it is. with him many you know, times. It's fine. Jordy and Mickey need <laughs> to do their homework. Their information is not to be trusted as they proved. They put no effort in making sure of their facts edit they absolutely can't be bothered to read and no wonder why they have little credibility they just think they are disliked here because 
they didn't go hard enough on Jordan Page. They don't do their research, and their whole excruciating, ridiculous rumor conversation is full of assumptions and allegations. It's a low, long format, low value, long format TikTok rumor mill of a joke video. Let Which me this say last real quick. Bit, okay. Let me say real quick before I forget oh, this. Your turn. The allegations, because I don't want this to talk run about out the of, allegations. <laughs> I don't want this to run out of my brain. The Jordan Page video is likely the video that we did the most intensive wording on because we didn't want a copyright strike we didn't want a cease and desist letter from the page company we didn't want any yeah. of those things and so when we're talking about rumors and allegations we were more careful in that video than probably anything we've ever done yeah which i mean we've had people like we had tiffany nelson try to mm -hmm. she contacted youtube yep. and tried to take down our video get our video taken down alleging that her children were being bullied because of our video, which is laughable, to be honest, because, because the source video. material was her video, and I wasn't making fun of her kids, I was making fun of her. Mm -hmm. And so YouTube forwarded that along to us. At, yeah, as we a get to read your FYI. email. So if you send an email to YouTube, hate watchers, just a little FYI. If you send an email to YouTube to try to get our video taken down, YouTube will forward us that email. Yeah. So we get to read it. So just FYI and what you watch, what you say. Yeah. Spell check it too, yeah. by the way. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? The, the allegations and assumptions, I'm assuming they're talking about us assuming or alleging that Jordan and Bubba are probably getting a divorce. That is on the same subreddit that we're reading this comment from. So I don't yeah. understand what that is. And finally, my challenge is on the subject or let's see buh, 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 buh. i can easily make a correction video on all the mistakes and false assumption Great. go for it do it link me tag us love it tag us in the title i'd love to hear it i'd love to because a, a lot of times people are like oh they just get everything wrong they have zero credibility on what tell me so i could fix it well and it's fine because like there are plenty of just like i said before this there are plenty of things that we don't include there are plenty of things that we forget or didn't come across or whatever yeah and so there are reasons that things don't get exclude included and it make they make it sound like we were like loving on the bucket list family which couldn't be further from the truth we've always been bucket list family haters but so i don't know what all this mess is about no apparently we we got stuff wrong on the bucket list family or whatever which very well could be because we're human and we make mistakes and there's probably things that we forget or there's things that we you know did wrong and if there are things like that that people point out i usually go to the comments and we will try to update the comments with the corrections we've done that plenty of times it is not feasible to go in and edit a video in that way so if it's like i just I, we're giving too much to this anyway but i like to point out these yeah. things if they do have like valuable criticism that i can walk away from and be like hey that's something that we can do better on and we're always as content creators aiming to improve our research ability this is not our full-time job so we do the best that we can and when we misreport or when we make errors we correct them and to just yeah. say that we have zero credibility to compare us to dcp to say all these things like it's just it's not reflective of our current content and it's not reflective of the time because you're not in my house and seeing the time. Like I spent at least 20 plus hours on our MLM video at least. And so, and that comes out tomorrow, by the way. Yeah. That's, that's just, but that's researching just and writing. That's that just researching count. and writing the script and verifying my information and going back and forth. So it's like this whole argument that we're, you know, we're not credible and we don't do any research, which like, what am I doing then? Like, what am I doing yeah. for those 20 hours? Like, fiddling my thumbs and just sitting there staring at my computer like I wish so yeah well and if they want to say that they don't do research I literally have our notes right here oh yeah from let me move this over a little bit <laughs> I was like oh I don't know if there's stuff that I want you guys to see here these are just notes like this isn't even all the stuff that we said bunch of screenshots spent a bunch of time just pouring over Instagram mm -hmm. looking for things to include and, and everything and again our video wasn't even just about Jordan and Bubba it was also about Mormonism and how it affects or how it influences them and and everything like that so and do we research as many as as or as much as like other larger channels probably not because this isn't our full-time job 
Like we don't do this for a living. I'm if I swoop. had, yeah, we're we're not swoop. So if I had all day to research and spend time and put in the work, like people don't understand that it takes time and it takes effort, and these things don't just come together magically after a few hours of research, and then you can just present it in like a beautiful way. Yeah, like that's not how these things work, and we're very intentional about the things that we do, and so. Where there is criticism, we try to pull things from, but this feels very personal. Like, this feels like this person if they very didn't, much. If they didn't talk about Mormon feelings. stories, I'd be like, this person is a Mormon and they're just mad that we're fucking <laughs> apostates and we're shitting on the church all the time. Which does Jordan Page, is the Jordan Page subreddit, does it have more Mormons maybe? Like, is there a demographic there? I mean, it doesn't change any of my opinions, but it could largely change our, like, people's perception of us because we're not liked by Mormons. So there's that, you know? Is that a factor? Maybe minimally, maybe not at all. I don't know. Worth, like, Who thinking knows? about. But anyway, this person obviously has, like, a very intense opinion on us. So I try, when people are that passionate about something, I try to take Shout something out, out of it. Swoop is dope. I try to take something out of it and, like, so we can, you know, maybe think about something or improve something. But this is not, there's not anything that I can pull out of this. This just seems to be, like, very personal and, like, I'm trying to be productive here so i'm not gonna say anything all het sis if you'd like to know more about jordan page you can go we did do that video it probably about let me see if i can find it for you i can't <laughs> i can't type please answer do mormons believe in ghosts i mean in what capacity on the Mormon. i mean technically they all do they believe in the holy ghost and they believe that everybody's spirit passes through the veil we into love the Swoop. spirit world, which is overlaid on top of our physical world. Swoop included us. She shouted us out in her one of her eight passengers videos, which we really appreciated. I forget the. What is the name of that video? Mormon influencers, Jordan Page. It's in our Mormon is influencers playlist. Yeah, go to that playlist. You'd be able to find it's it in easiest. There. Again, I can give you an answer on what it's officially called. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but there are reasons for doing the things that we do. And so, yeah, I'm Morden sorry. Influencers, Jordan, Jordan Page. Page. It's it back from forward. February 1st, one year ago. <coughs> so anyway, there's that. I hope we don't offend the rest of the server. There were also some other just not generally the kindest comments about us in there. <laughs> I, don't care. I, I stopped reading. Um. My skin has grown in great thickness since starting our channel um, because people are always like, you got to have thick skin to be a content creator and not everybody does. And so you instead do your best and that's what I'm doing. So yes, we're not for everybody. And if we're not for you, then I, yeah. that's fine. I'm not upset about it. People think that they can get to me. You cannot. Literally nothing. The only gets person to say. who can get to me is myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> we have read. I mean, we've gotten death threats. We've gotten vile shit from when we started content creation. So that's just kind of the name of the game. But anywho, I wanted to point that out and take heed of that if there was something too productive to be taken from it. But I don't see anything other than what we continue to do, which is make better yep. videos make better content because the longer you make content usually the better you get at it and we're putting in the work over time this is an i'm at least job, quicker so. at, at editing yeah i don't know if i'm better but i am quicker indeed you don't have to have thick skin but it can help it definitely will help it as far as longevity helps. goes thick skin and a therapist because yeah that's just and it, it's not like a oh feel bad for us thing because we're content creators and we know we put our lives on the internet and this is what you get it's just about learning how to deal with it in a way that works for you and so it doesn't bother you anymore most of them don't and i don't read comments generally speaking but when i'm doing research i have to read so it's kind of hard to avoid gal torin with a don't know in a a currency that i've never seen before hey friends i can't believe i caught a live stream in action i'm supposed to be asleep love your channel i learned so much you guys make me happy thank you thank you we appreciate you and don't lose sleep over us you can you can see all the same stuff tomorrow. You know, replay. Shout out to the replay crew, honestly. But we're glad you're here. Don't ruin tomorrow <laughs> for us. <laughs> right. Um. Okay. So 
what do we want to cover next? Um, do we want to do the an Jordan update? Page update? Like the only thing, there's nothing really that's changed. Like she oh, yeah, continues the... to not. Um, she hasn't been doing like Sunday family photos like she usually does. Um, she's not wearing her wedding ring, which to me is like the most illegitimate way of determining whether or not there's something going on there. Because you know, there's plenty of times when married people don't wear their wear their wedding ring. Like I didn't wear mine when I was pregnant with our son. And All the way up until last year. Ruby wasn't wearing it when she was still married to Kevin. And, like, there's, you know, there's it plenty of It doesn't necessarily reasons. mean anything. Could it? Because Bubba still wears his all the time and she doesn't and only does sometimes. Maybe. Maybe it's significant of something. Maybe not. Um, Bubba's going hard in the Mormon content department. I saw a post where he had, like, recently gone to the temple and seems to be. My man's going through it. Maybe. I, bet. Maybe. I don't know. Well, the, the posts that we were going to bring up, but they were not going to show because I didn't even think, oh, their kids' faces aren't blurred. Well, maybe that's constructive feedback that we can give to the subreddit. Yeah. Is maybe don't put the kids' faces on there. The rule, Minor faces rule is subreddit. no snarking on kids. Make it even harder by blurring, blurring their, their faces. faces. Um, but it said Jordan's latest video. I'm Jordan Page. I've got eight children and no Bubba in the family photo stuck out to me that she said I've got eight children instead of we have eight children which if you go to her Instagram you won't find Bubba no and she also deleted the playlists or um privated I went and looked for them today but oh I yeah there was a, a um, marriage playlist that she had and the live that she did with Bubba that we watched yeah a long time ago she did this with Bubba and they talked about Mormonism at large and or I guess Mormonism as they know it and yeah that's not there anymore so you know who knows for what reasons that is but that seems pretty specific like i don't know why you would delete the i mean it's personal info about your marriage so maybe she doesn't want it out there anymore i mean they could be in couples counseling they could be fine again this is all speculative they at least seem like they're separated it seems different you know it seems their content has a noticeable shift in it from what I've been reading. And so that's that's something to be aware of. Most times snarkers pick up on these things before yeah. the usual folks do. So I think there is something to it might that. Might be a little soft launch. His real action. name is not Bubba. His name is Brand. Brand. But that's what he goes by on basically everything. And then their cabin is still up for sale. Um, they had a cabin in the Utah wilderness. They're selling it for a pretty penny of $4 million. And apparently it's been on the market before, but they previously took it down. It's back up again. It's a massive cabin and it's got some acreage. So the price isn't like too shocking to me, but it's still a lot of money. So is that related to marriage? I mean, it could entirely not be. It could have nothing to do with anything related to their relationship, but it is interesting nonetheless. So that's all I have in that department. I have nothing official. When I see that petition for divorce pop up in the exchange system from either one of them, you'll be the first to know. But we'll until let then, you know. that's yeah. all we've got. So, what would you like to discuss next? Um, we didn't. Let's get some. We want to talk like in order. Let's give some closure on last week's big ticket item. The oh yeah, Mormon stories thing. Will you send me a? I do have a link for that. Send me a link. Please. If you watch last week's video, you'll remember the Mormon stories debacle with. Um, Charlie yes, and Ryan they're s- they're selling the cabin. God, I couldn't get that out. And that whole sounded thing. like a snake. How's Kazoo? Kazoo is good. Oh, I guess that brings up, um, yeah, toilet potty training. Oh man, it was fucking awful last week. <laughs> but this week has been going much better. Do you have, um, or did you? I don't have the link yet. I texted it to you. Why is it not coming up? Hello? Why is this being dumb? I just sent it. I know. Well, I have it on my phone. It's not showing up in my iMessage. Oh. I don't know why. That's weird. Are we going to have issues with this because I'm not logged in? Just go to Mormon Stories Instagram. I'm not logged in on Chrome. Hold on. I might be logged in on Safari. Technical difficulties. Please hold. One moment. Dead air. 
Dead air. Hero of Canton gifted 20 memberships. Holy moly. Hi, Hero of Canton. Hero of Canton is the champion of gifting memberships. Truly. Thank you for the gifted, Hero of Canton. We appreciate you. Now all of you. And welcome to all these people who are getting early access to stuff. Yeah. Now all of you, if you want to go watch the MLM video early, you can. Let's see if this is logged in. Okay. Looks like they're not going to give us any trouble for not being logged in. Okay. So, uh, just to preface this, last week, if you'd like more information on it, just go watch the stream last week. We we discussed this for like an hour. Indeed. So, um, and I got we got really good feedback about it because we were kind of processing things as we were going. As we were going, so which is nice. Is this the same? Go to this the, is the same text, so we just want to. We'll click on the arrow and it pulls it up on the I know. image. Okay. okay, let's see here. Can we move us? Let me move us to the other side of the screen real quick. Okay. We did see the SNL sketch. It was pretty Which more one? targeted. The one about the cups. Oh, the, the Stanley Cups one. Indeed. It was a good sketch. Okay, um, so last week we were discussing Mormon Stories had an episode, uh, Mormon Stories podcast. If you don't know, check it out. We were on more Mormon Stories podcast. They're on our channel. You Multiple go times see now. Them. And uh, so they did an episode where they were discussing uh, Charlie Bird and Ryan Clifford, which is a couple, a married couple in the Mormon church. And they are seemingly getting being afforded opportunities that most queer couples or individuals for that fact in within the mormon church do not. are not afforded and oftentimes they end up just being excommunicated anyway to shorten things up um one of the mormon stories podcast staff gerardo and um friend of that show nuance ho kara went to their ward to see them at church in the pews taking the sacrament to show that they have been accepted as worthy despite within being married that, and gay. despite being married and gay in a gay relationship, which is inherently and strictly against Mormon doctrine. That is not allowed. You are living in sin. You, in most places in the world, would not be able to do that. Um, so... Anyway, there was a lot of controversy surrounding this because it does feel rather invasive that they went and essentially spied on the couple. Welcome, um, gals. Though we did discuss some of uh, Gerardo's perspective regarding. Gerardo actually reached out to me. He texted me yeah. last week, but we've been um, potty training our kid. And so there has not been. Between yeah. that and my work and the MLM video, I have not had time to talk to him. So. That's just full disclosure. Yeah. They they did kind of post a snarky response to some people uh, who were kind of offering some criticism. Um, so there's that. But Gerardo had a lot more insight, and it does seem and like some he valid has, points. Yeah. He has m much more experience than we do uh, at concerning Charlie Bird, who was the former BYU Cougars mascot. And anyway, so yes, or today they issued... An apology um, toward the two that were mentioned and the Mormon LGBTQ community at large, and even I. Who was it that had responded? Big name in Utah, organization-wise. Equality Utah. Yeah, even Equality Utah had um, made a post made a statement condemning yeah. this, which I think was a little bit much, in my opinion. Like Equality Utah is a massive nonprofit and this yeah. seems very like showy yes and like of all things to be devoting our attention to especially during the legislative session yeah there's that this is me I, being a hater ass bitch by the there, way there's also <laughs> there's also a lot of nuance to this because in obviously there needs to be criticism offered because they are receiving preferential treatment by definition 
but they're the organization they're receiving preferential treatment the preferential treatment in this situation is they get to be like all of the other heteros yeah because the organization giving them preferential treatment is bigoted homophobic and awful so <laughs> indeed anyway so i guess we should just get into it i'll let you read because my mouth is dry as fuck so this is coming from Mormon Stories, the official account. Gerardo and I deeply regret if anyone has used our Mormon Stories podcast episode entitled A New Norm, Married Gay Mormons Get Callings in the Sacrament as an excuse to intimidate or threaten violence against Charlie Bird and Ryan Clifford. While many of us have been victims of the Mormon church as well-established does not wing over the years, which is a name that I just even refuse to utter in this household, we want to state unequivocally that we condemn violence in all forms. We call on the Mormon church to clean up this toxic facet of its culture through the same church disciplinary process that has traditionally reserved for same-sex married couples and critics of the church. Uh, just a quick side note. We won't get into it much. Desiret, Desnat is short for Deseret Nationalists which is a subset of Mormons who believe that Deseret should be its own, or Utah should be its own sovereign nation called Deseret, and it should be a Mormon theocracy. Okay. So the aforementioned podcast episode had two purposes. One, to genuinely celebrate the Mormon church's apparent acceptance of Charlie and Ryan's marriage, which is an astounding marker of social progress, given the church's well-established history of hunting down and excommunicating queer couples, which I contest that a little bit and two to express a sincere desire for all latter-day saint queer couples to enjoy the same freedoms and privileges that charlie and ryan enjoy regardless of social status wealth or privilege as someone who is forced to keep his own marriage hidden from the church and from his family out of fear seeing a same-sex married couple being embraced by their congregation in public was a sacred moment for gerardo one that he wished he and his husband zach could have experienced as faithful church members which is valid yeah it's also important to bring up that gerardo is a person from color is he from mexico i have no idea i can't remember i'm not going to say that he immigrated or anything because i'm not sure but he is a person of color so there's even more what a he experienced that yeah horrible there's even worse things oppression that, and disgustingness from the church including conversion therapy yeah so his voice i mean as much as people are kind of targeting him in this which i don't think is entirely fair i think there's deeply needed room for nuance here because he is also a queer person in a yeah. queer relationship who likely like just in this comment wishes that they would have had this experience amy says gerardo is from mexico okay that's what i thought i wasn't positive though okay we find troy williams so he was the one that made the statement for equality utah characterization of Gerardo's peaceful unobtrusive attendance of a public LDS sacrament meeting as being comparable to the actions of Westboro Baptist Church which is extremely inappropriate or of historical LGBTQ that, genital expense inspection which I think they is, really said that I did not read the statements in, in its entirety we can look at it maybe we'll need to bring it up to be inflammatory and repugnant which if that is the case that I completely agree we struggle to see how punching down on and defaming a queer Utah and an LGBTQ ally and podcast host is befitting of the mission of equality Utah which I agree we also wonder if Troy's outrage would be better directed at the toxic and often deadly LGBTQ doctrines policies and practices of the Mormon church and what have I told you guys time and time again Again, including last time which was the church is doing a lovely thing here for them which is distracting people from the actual problem at yeah. hand which is literally them. literally within this week or maybe just a little bit longer the state of utah the governor bitch ass cox i'm probably gonna get i hate that guy he's the worst little he has no principles zero principles signed into law a bill that prohibits that places very stringent laws regarding people using the fucking bathroom in public. Like, I cannot believe that that is the hot button issue that that legislature is wasting time on. And they are going to end up eating their words because now there's going to be a bunch of men in the girl's restroom because by law they are supposed to be there because on their birth certificate originally that was what they were assigned. Indeed. Like it's going to be funny because I mean we saw it last year when they did a whole wave of book bannings in schools and then people in Davis County were like let's get the Bible out of the, the libraries. And all of a sudden they were like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. 
you can't just do that. Well, why not? It's got sex. It's got disgusting things in it. So why do we need that in the libraries? Anyway, so this, that is the backdrop, of the this. context that we are reading this in. And this is what Mormonism wants to do. This is what they, and they love it when this shit happens. Like they love it when there's controversies with John and shit, because what it does is it pits all the ex-Mormons and post-Mormons against each other. And then it affirms a lot of the confirmation biases of the current Mormons that think that John is just a terrible person. And so this is like in part doing the church's work for them, which I, I don't want to do. And an, an inherent enemy of the church is all of a sudden seemingly an ally in this situation. Exactly. Okay, and then next one. That said, Gerardo and I express deep regret and apologize to both Charlie and Ryan and to the broader Mormon and ex-Mormon LGBTQ plus communities for the way we handled this aspect of the episode. Everyone, public figures included, deserves a certain degree of privacy. We are deeply sad and truly sorry to have played a part in any fear, distress, or division within the Utah LGBTQIA community. Gerardo and I have reached out to Charlie and Ryan directly and look forward to meeting with them to offer a direct apology if and, if and when they feel ready. And this isn't to say that I'm a Troy Williams hater. He does a lot of great work with the quality Utah. I think just, it just the statement yeah, it seems doesn't land misguided. For me. Okay, next one. I mean, we said that about what they did last week. Yeah, it it that was a little misguided, and this also criticize your role models, misguided. people. And I mean, it's easy to have a visceral reaction to this kind of thing because as soon as I heard that they had did, done that, I was like, "That's not it." Immediately, yeah. no. And then as we've learn more about it it's it's become less clear as to like what is good and what is bad what's the good and the bad and the bad and the good um thank you for the gifted again peak nridic there you go close <laughs> enough um we next appreciate one you. they're always donating it you need to change your username so i can read it <laughs> all right go ahead as the host of Mormon Stories podcast and as the executive director of the Open Stories Foundation, it is ultimately my responsibility to ensure that our podcast episodes conform with our values. For this episode, I clearly failed, and I want to take full responsibility for that. I'm sorry to Charlie and Ryan, to Gerardo, and to the broader community. As an organization, we are in the process of reflecting on the situation more deeply to come up with tangible changes to ensure that nothing like this happens again. Which I think is important to recognize here that, again, we're dealing with humans. Like... John's initial response to this might have been like a little intense because he's feeling attacked. And what yeah. do we do when we feel attacked? Like we we push back, right? And so this is the perfect example of somebody taking in criticism and taking in complaints and reflecting and doing the work and then making a legitimate apology. Like that is this is exactly what we want. Like this is exactly what we want to see with people is progress because Yeah it's human natural i like to say is it's human Kevin natural says, um to get defensive when yeah. people push up against things and so the fact that they were able to sit with this even though their initial response wasn't what people had hoped for they came around and reflected and this is truly like a great situation like a great demonstration of growth in my opinion yeah and i've always kind of had a and maybe my perception is misplaced, but a perception of Gen X Mormons in particular, or ex Mormons, that it seems like they have additional deconstructing to do regarding some aspects of the church. And I don't think John is a nece necessarily immune Which to that. Which it would make sense when they it spent comes more to, time in the church. Yeah, when it comes to like queer topics, John has done a good job generally in deconstructing from Mormonism and, and everything like that. Um, so maybe this was just another aspect of that where, I don't know, it was just misguided and ne not necessarily his intentions or anything, but inevitably intentions are irrelevant. It's the perception that it's impact. Yeah. And impact. Yeah. So finally, and most importantly, we remain hopeful that the apparent embrace of Charlie and Ryan as a married couple into the warm fellowship of their LDS ward and stake represents a welcome shift in LDS policy and doctrine regarding the status and fellowship of LGBTQ Mormons. It has long been the position of Mormon Stories podcast that Latter-day Saints should not have to choose between the person they love and their treasured faith. Um, this was written by John and Gerardo. So, and I agree with that last statement. By and large, when you watch Mormon Stories podcasts and the interviews that they do, that is always really been their position that yeah. it shouldn't have to be a, like this or that it should be a both so 
I think this is a good example of like learning and growing and when you know better, do better. And when you want, you know, when you have personal things come up that you sit with them and then you make informed choices and move on. Yeah. And I, it it does just seem like a lapse in judgment because anecdotally when we went on Mormon stories regarding Jordan's, um, story and her upbringing and the abuse uh, and everything that was involved with that he was very sensitive to those things he wanted to make sure that we didn't go anywhere that Jordan didn't want to go or anything that would be like too trigger some for her and everything like that so yeah our experiences with John have been nothing but positive and same yeah. with Gerardo we've had pretty limited interactions with him at this point but they've all been positive so let's look at the Equality Utah statement real quick, just so we can determine. Do they? Um, let's look. It's that one right there, I believe. Oh, wait, maybe not. That's the Those are the house, the 257. One. It was on their Instagram account for sure. <laughs> let's see. Go up. It's that one. I this think. one? Wait, no, this is the same. Oh, no, it's the blue one on the right. A joint statement. Equality Utah, Wyoming, Equality, and Equality Arizona. God damn it. Can we log in? Will it let me? Will it give you the security code this time? <laughs> Maybe. I hate these apps that force you to sign in. I, it drives me nuts. Wanna... Like, I understand you need to get your your ad revenue in but put the ads in the margins or something i don't know i don't have anything <laughs> potties have doors what's the big issue here let me send you Just this copy the and you can send me the post directly because that seemed to work from there welcome strawberry angel to the terrestrial kingdom well, wouldn't I just be sending you the same link? Is the main criticism that John was telling someone else's story? I think most of the the issue stems from going to their ward. Going to their ward, and it, in a way, kind of mimics a lot of the persecution yeah. that uh, queer Mormons face within the church, which I I completely understand. So, okay. Welcome, this, Strawberry Angel. They they mentioned the Equality Utah um, post regarding the topic and condemning their actions. Um, and so there was ago. some pretty dicey comparisons in there. So we didn't read it. I pulled it up, but I had a kazoo in my ear. I went, daddy, daddy, daddy. So... Okay, so as LGBTQ leaders who value work and work with people of faith to advance the rights of all people, we reject in the strongest terms the recent actions of John DeLynn and the organization he leads, Mormon Stories. On January 25th and 29th, the Mormon Stories podcast aired two episodes that are an egregious example of the culture of surveillance, harassment, and bullying that is far too common in our society. Mormon Stories located, spied on, and reported the worship activities of gay members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They then took the extraordinary step of posting videos about these activities, including screenshots of their personal membership information and manipulating photographs of their wedding day to create sensational material for visual promotion of the episodes. Now, that's an AI sentence, in my opinion. And also Because that's manipulating, describing a thumbnail. Yeah. That, that's a thumbnail. That is really... That is <laughs> sensationalizing what it was. <laughs> these actions lead to the immediate harassment of... And threats of violence toward this gay couple, their family, and church leadership. Everyone, absolutely everyone, regardless of how public or private their life is, has the right to practice their faith and belief system or lack thereof within the community they choose. As LGBTQ people, we know the immense harm perpetuated by the idea that our lives often the most private aspect of our lives from our intimate relationships to the status of our genitals and regarding to gender affirmation and transition are often considered open for public discussion and debate. In all cases, our lives as LGBTQ people are our own. We owe you no explanation about the way we live, the way we love, the way we care for our bodies, or the way we exercise our faith to our right to faith and religion. We call on Mormon stories to engage in a restorative justice process today by doing the following. Apologize to the gay couple they spied on and publicly harassed. Remove the Mormon stories episodes immediately from all platforms. Commit to a process that recognizes that honoring individual choice is the cornerstone of democracy. 
There's no room in our movement for the harassment of individuals in their place of worship or because of their LGBTQ identities. We expect this from the Westboro Baptist Church, not from people claiming to advocate on our behalf. We call on John Dillon and the Mormon stories seem to do better. So first things first, comparing this to the Westboro Baptist seems like a little that bit much. That is... A little extra. Because I don't love what they did, right? But let's also remember that there was no harassment involved. They simply attended the ward to see if they were there. Yes, was their purpose okay or not okay? That's up for a debate. Yeah. Do I love it? No. They weren't out there picketing. But they weren't out there picketing. They weren't talking to them. They weren't. As far as we know, they just attended to witness that. And then that was it. Yeah. And And they did so... They weren't, like, announcing that they were going to be there. They just... No, as far as I know. And, you know, we... Like, I'm bisexual, so I'm looking at this through, additionally, a queer lens. And this, to me, even as a bisexual woman, reads off to me. There are some things that I agree with. I agree with the sentiment around, like, surveillance and whatnot. Like, these are not things that I disagree with. But the extremity, like, the extremity of this with the situation at hand, like... I don't think we need to try to compare this to genital surveillance in order to make it bad. Like, it's just not okay as it is. So why do we need to compare it to that? Um, It's also just kind of hard-headed to think that Desnat was not already aware of Charlie. Yeah. These, uh, I mean, they call themselves Deseret Nationalists, but they're just sweaty, stinky people on Twitter who like to post up anonymously wearing sunglasses and covering their faces um, and they hide behind anonymity to talk about how they want to do awful things to people like Charlie and like these people they're chronically terminally online so of course they were already aware of this I just it gave it a little bit more publicity I don't think most people out there probably even were aware or really would even care but does not definitely already was. <laughs> yeah, I don't so, know. There's something like as yeah. a queer person, there is something about this that rubs me the wrong way. And I don't know. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong necessarily with making a statement. I don't know that it was necessary. I guess if I put my social worker hat on, I can see I can see the value in it in some sense. But also, I, I don't think... know if the wording was appropriate. I th- And I think they're basically kind of just letting the church off scot-free in a situation like this. They don't even mention the church and the awful things that the church perpetuates and the active role that the church and its theology plays in the exact same thing that they are fighting against in at the Capitol. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the harassment thing seems like a bit much to me. Like, I, they're saying things that I don't think people disagree with. Like, people don't disagree that people should be able to have the right to practice their faith and belief system yeah. or lack the layer of within but the community. But also they let the Mormon church know that they <laughs> deserve the right to worship in the same place as their neighbors. I see the value in the statement. I think it could have been worded better, personally. This is just my personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving it's like the holocaust vibes no dude it's just bad you don't have to bring in the holocaust well yeah i'm just like the the severity of it Seriously. like i don't think any like i don't think person we... is looking at this and being like this is bad but it's really yeah. not that bad like i don't it's think we bad. need to be hyperbolic about it it's not the westboro baptist church right like the the comparison to westboro is is misplaced i'm yeah. i'm sorry I'm all for like calling out and or calling in and offering criticism and things for reflection, which it sounds like they've done. But I think we're ignoring a larger issue at hand here, which is the church. Um, it's also interesting to me that Equality Arizona and Wyoming were also in on this. Yeah, they both got their fucking issues like this is a response that i would expect to see for something much bigger than this and i'm not saying that this isn't like without like i'm not saying it's not without merit but the westboro thing has me has me the wrong way (laughs) yeah (laughs) like i don't think there's anything wrong necessarily with making a statement i don't think there's anything wrong with advocating for queer people me being one of them i don't think that there's necessarily like anything wrong with that i just don't think the statement was worded 
appropriately. This seems like something that was worded in the moment, like in the heat of the moment with a lot of no revisions intensity behind it, which is fair. Valid emotions like have them sit with them. But I think it might have been taken a little bit too far with the Westboro thing. Yeah, it is what it is. So want to put anyway, it all out on there, there that's on the just table. my opinion as a queer person i don't care if you agree or disagree with it this is just commentary. ultimately nobody is a monolith including no. uh organizations like equality utah or open stories foundation and mormon stories podcast and you know or us. we are allies and we our whole purpose of the last video was to have a nuanced discussion where we tried to honor the multiple aspects of this and we pride ourselves on being like a safe space for our lgbtq peeps so that remains the same i think any opinions that you have on this is valid you're right so. yeah i i it shouldn't come as a surprise by any means we're i mean you see how i get heated about the bathroom thing yeah. it's people getting their garmies in a bunch over where people are pissing and it's fueled by misinformation and culture war talking points from political talking heads who get a paycheck from saying shit like that like yeah. let my friends pee god damn it jeez yeah. uh, i also missed a super chat from earlier ivana tinkle very fitting 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 and she brings up speaking of potty training i'm a mom of three. <laughs> oh shit a book was this. recommended to me toilet training in less than a day btw probably won't happen in less than a day but it has lots of handy tools yeah we took definitely a, not less than a day yeah we took a did a course from big little feelings where they talk about toilet tra yes abolish urinals baloney i'm not even bothered helping kazoo stand to pee because it's disgusting honestly <laughs> The kids miss enough when they're sitting. Let's not add another little thing. Um. Oh yeah, little big feelings. They did. It's like a three day thing, and it's been it's been working pretty good. Yeah. But it's def. I mean, they say three days, but it's three days until you're in the feel of going to the toilet and everything. Every kid does it their own and, way. Yeah. Let my people pee. Loney is being unhinged and it's driving me nuts. Oh, he's trying to get the little frillies up. On, on my pants. pants. Nice. Okay, anyways. It's fine to say Mormon stories did not handle the initial situation, but let's not, but it's not equivalent to the Westboro Baptist Church. Yeah, like Agree. in the broadest Hi, sense is like not even close. Sam, thank you. Thank you. For the Sam gifted. M, thank you. And welcome, Percival P. Danny D, Jordan, thanks for the tip about library ebooks. Reading way more now. Love that. We love readers. Somebody asked if I had started House of Flame and Shadow yet because of everything that's going off, been going on. I haven't yet. No. I have she to be in the right headspace for that. But we uh, we filmed and edited this weekend. So. It was probably Tom who was meowing earlier. Was there a screaming cat? Somebody said they heard that. it earlier. I think Tom I just tune it out. He does it all the time. Yeah, <laughs> he's fed. He's fine. Can we break the video into segments or maybe have the content first and the crying and self-pity at the end or maybe two videos, one containing the content and another for crying and whining? You could do that on your own channel, buddy. <laughs> okay. Don't watch it live. <laughs> anyway. My youngest broke me. Oh, yeah. This is definitely breaking me. I had a hell of a time the other day. When we had a big regression. Speaking of baloney. And we had multiple poops being cleaned up. And if you're aware, let me just say this crazy. right now for this person who made this comment. I I spend time after the video and watch the video back and timestamp the lives after we're done with them. So just FYI. Yeah, don't watch it live. <laughs> that's more effort on my part. And I do it. And I do it after the fact because you can't put chapters in at the beginning of a video when you're doing it live. Let's so check your activity. Just FYI. FYI, but anyway, so now that Baloney has Leo his butt previously in my face. said this show gets better every couple of weeks, like clockwork. Keep up the good work. I hope that so. was good constructive criticism. Where did you go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? Okay, are we talking about Julie or not? 
Uh, yeah. You. Do we need to have. A, I think we need to have a conversation about it. Let's have a conversation. Okay. So, somebody brought to my attention on social media this last week. Um, Julie, formerly Julie Boyer, who is not a Boyer anymore. I think her last name is Jepson. Um, is she officially not a Boyer? It's in the works. Um, so Julie Boyer is the separated ex-partner of Alex Boyer, who is a very famous Mormon musician. Um, do you oh, want to pull is up like, a picture of him so people know? Yes. He, he is, is very famous. So he was such a, um, like an inspirational faith promoting mm -hmm. figure, really. I guess he has a. Here, we'll, we'll go to this. Oh God! His website. Please don't play any music. <laughs> right. I mean, his website's kick ass. So this is Alex Boyer. He is a very well known Mormon artist. Has been around. Was part of the I'm a Mormon campaign. Um, they highlighted hey, him read quite a bit. His little blurb right here. Alex oh, Boyer is a truly multicultural, multi generational global artist and speaker with over 1 billion views on his YouTube channel. Boyer's diverse blend of Af African infused pop music and vibrant dynamic visuals have captured a loyal legion of online followers, turning him into a viral sensation. Um, if you are familiar with the piano guys, they did a cover of Paradise by Coldplay. That was him singing in that video. I just remembered. And I, that one was pretty popular. Yes. Sorry. Um, Jenny H. said, I met him once when I was going to BYUI. Felt so special at the time. Yeah, he is very, he's really talented. I'm not going to lie. I mean, he's lie. an exceptional artist for sure. He has a really interesting, is this him with Lindsey Sterling? He's going to play music. Yeah, just take it to the... That. If you don't have it muted. Um, this is his YouTube channel. He was also in oh, Saturday's like Warrior. Stuff. If you watched the newer version with us, he was also in that. Yeah. And recall. then very disappointingly, like his most recent big thing that or undertaking that he was doing was um, kind of a, a musical about Joseph Smith in the style of Hamilton. Hamilton. And it's the fucking most disappointing thing I've ever heard. It is so cringe. Very well done, but oh my god. Yeah. I think Nuance Ho did a video about that. Yeah. If you're interested in that. It was a while ago. Lindsay Sterling is also Mormon, but I heard that she might not be anymore. There's That's allegations, rumor. Yeah. But. She she wasn't... He wasn't a lifelong Mormon either, and Lindsay Sterling wasn't a lifelong Mormon. She converted kind of... Yeah, I think he is when British. she was a teenager. He was in a British band. He was in a boy band. What was the name of it? Well, is he originally from Britain? I think I think his parents were immigrants to to England, and then he came. I've got it right here. He was born in London to Nigerian parents. Yeah. Um, but he was in what was the band? In 1995, he was the lead singer of Awesome, a European boy band. So it sounds like 1995, 1996, they were fairly successful. They were making top 10 charts He's all across foggy. Europe. Top 10 charts is pretty significant. Yeah. I mean, he's performed alongside Brian Adams, George Michael, Simon and Garfunkel, MC Hammer. Um, so, like, he's not a, like, small musician or artist by, by any means. Um, so... The reason that we bring him up, and we've talked about him before, it was a while ago um, that we talked about him. We were still living in Utah when we talked about him last. Yeah, it was on a stream um, because they do they have a family vlog channel. They do. The Boye Family Jewels, yeah. if I recall correctly, which it's no longer named. Um, So things started getting controversial when his wife took to social media and started saying that they were separated he didn't want to be married anymore and it gave kind of he left in the middle of the night or left same day kind of vibes that he was done and basically peaced out um which is very upsetting to anybody and they have eight children i believe yeah they have a lot of kids 
So he just kind of up and peaced out, according to his wife, Julie, leaving her with eight kids and the financial implications of eight kids. Um, And she was relieved when this first happened um, in August of 2022. That's when it originally happened? They filed and he filed in January of 2023. Of last year? So 2022. I feel like. I want to say. Oh, no, that does track because I feel like we had just moved here when we when you had mentioned that. There's also a show called Gene Simmons right. Family Jewels. I don't know if any of you guys have watched that, but that's what it always makes me think of. Um, I love that show. But anyway. <laughs> it so, is trash TV. Though. <laughs> it is, but it's so funny. Um, I think that's what made me want to become a marriage therapist was watching him and Shannon go to therapy. But anyway, that's a story for another day. So Julie is left alone basically because he apparently had left for London. So he was not helping at all. And financially, we don't know what the situation was. Like if him not being there meant that they weren't making any money, like we don't know what it was, but she started being really strapped for cash. Um, Which obviously if your financial support left up in the middle of the night, you're going to be kind of stressed, Um, which is valid, but she also has a family channel. So she was putting all of this on the internet because they're family vloggers or were trying to be yeah weren't as successful as like ruby or the likes of them or like the lebrants or anything but they were putting out fairly consistent content yeah and i remember originally looking into it and like the first reason why we talked about her was i was just going through a vlog real quick or through their channel and one of them was like oh taking the kids to school or something like the first five minutes of this vlog, I was like, oh, that's their school. I know exactly where they go to school. I know exactly where their kids' classrooms are. Which is concerning, right? Yeah. Questionable like... hag energy. I only watched Gene Simmons reality show for his son, Nick. Oh, I loved Nick. Even after all this time, I still remember all that. That's crazy. Yes, I love Gene Simmons Family Jewels. But anyway, so... I only ever remember that episode. The burning of his books, of his groupie books. I only remember Iconic. the episode of that he went to... He Where was like pressed going to, to Las Vegas. And he got bro- he broke down in like Bakersfield or something. And he ended up at the Mad Greek Cafe, which is a triple D. It was on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. And I went there. And then he got he gets saved by Carrot Top. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when he got his face a fever surgery dream. and he was driving around his house in the Segway, like on his little Segway oh, no. around the house. No, that is, that is that one. Never mind. We're good. So anyway, love Gene Simmons Family Jewels. I'll have to see if you can watch that anywhere. But because I would love to watch I that again. I was thinking of there was the other one that was um, Brett Michaels. Mm-hmm. Yep. I can't remember. That what was on that VH1, was wasn't it? Probably. I think my mom watched that. So anyways... The rub is this has been going on for a while. So he allegedly told Julie he didn't want to be married anymore in August um, or at the end of July and then left, just left in August, including leaving his children. Um, And so there she continued posting on YouTube um, and there's kind of conversation around whether or not like I have mixed feelings because we've gotten requests to cover what's going on with her. But I have mixed feelings about it for a few we- reasons. Um, one, she has said in her YouTube videos, because I watched um, one of them today, that she is primarily relying on YouTube for income. And so her family vlogging is funding their family life right now. And it sounds like he has minimal involvement at this point based on what she's saying so she's relying on family vlogging to keep their family afloat um she is a stay-at-home mom so she like the kids you know go to school and things but she does have young children um and she's also like i saw an instagram post today of hers where she was using um like plasma donation money to pay for gas and with as successful as Alex is, like, truly just, like, on a human-to-human level, like, there's no excuse for this bullshit. Like, I don't care how you feel about yeah. the mother of your kids. She's the mother of your fucking kids. So you step up and you put up your money because those are your kids. You participated yeah. in making them. You agreed to have them. Yeah, for however short of a period of time that may have been. Right. <laughs> it is no, like, in like it is no surprise to you that there's eight of them. And she's doing it on her own now. 
and I don't care what she did. I don't care if she cheated on you. I don't care what the circumstances are. Like I tell people in therapy all the time, when you get divorced, yeah. you don't divorce your kids. And so you the can't. people here who are really suffering are the children. The kids. Yeah. Um, so these are Mormon influencers because Alex Boyer is a famous musician. Yeah. And they have a family vlog channel. I mean, he has his own solo albums. Mm -hmm. He has book deals with Deseret Books. Mm -hmm. He was in the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, which is or now called the uh, Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. Uh, because Mormon is a victory for Satan. They had to rebrand all that shit, um, which is a paid gig. Like they go and this tour the and everything. So, yeah. This is the Boye family, which is no longer really a family anymore. Um, so people have asked, like we've, like a, just this week specifically, people asked us to cover it. And I have mixed feelings about it because we're, I mean, we're ruthless with family vloggers, right? Like we don't, like we give nuance sometimes where it applies. We try to at least, but we don't have a lot of patience um, or yeah like with family vloggers but it just doesn't seem right to me to cover her in that way um like she she was even going to the bishop correct she did a whole video her. on going to the bishop's storehouse yeah which is basically like the mormon food pantry um and things and so she's very public she says what she can she frequently says that like what she said is the only things that she can say about the marriage up to this point um and so ongoing legal proceedings are ongoing from what I looked at today. Um, so it just, she's involved in MLMs, which she would have been fitting to kind of put in probably our MLM video. But again, I'm kind of conflicted on covering this like in depth um, because this is kind of the perfect, it's kind of the perfect situation, the perfect reason when or like the perfect circumstances and context where people fall into MLMs. Like I'm a stay at home mom, so I can't just pick up a part-time job. My kids are, her kids are very active in like multiple extracurricular activities. And so having a part-time job very well might not work with her schedule, but moms who just can't pick up a job, like what do I do? I turn to things that I can do at home and who appeals to women who work at home, MLMs. Yeah. And so she's involved with multiple MLMs at this point. Um, she had made some, and including prior to the relationship issues, um, like Senegents and Lipsense, um, or Lipsense as you may know it, and Thrive Life, which we also talk about in tomorrow's video. And so she's got lots of like MLM stuff going on, which we also generally call out. Um, but I don't know. I don't feel like covering this is a good idea. It just doesn't feel right yeah. to me. I feel like we're kind of just watching the train wreck kind of unfold. And, you know, this is actually yeah. her life. And this is different than, like, Ruby, Why? who's a giant piece of abusive, torturous shit. Why are you... Stop. Because he won't leave me alone Why is, alone he, Why is he, like, ignited right now? I He's don't like know. He's attacking me. Attaching my feet and stuff. He never does that. This is what he does when you sit at the desk. What desk? When you sit at desks with baloney. At this it desk, I've him. never happened. This is my work desk. Oh, this, oh, the, it's. When he, he's <laughs> like this in my office Sorry. when I work too. Um, he just like gets really upset that you're working and like needs constant attention. Um, so it feels like Song of Saul has just said, it feels like punching down, which I don't want to yeah. do, which is why we're probably not going to cover it, but we I wanted to bring it up in the sense so that you guys understand like why. Because it doesn't make MLMs right. It doesn't make it okay. But you can see why people in vulnerable positions like these would land yeah. themselves potentially in an MLM. You know? So. Uh, who set it up here? If he gets divorced, will the church still want to promo him? Like, I don't think it's necessarily the divorce thing. I think it's the, like, you literally look like you're abandoning your kids kinds of situations. Yeah. Like, if you just, like, up and left, if that's truly what happened, then that's... Ow! Baloney! You're gonna get sent upstairs if you don't stop. He's biting me. Um, So, that's kind of how I feel about that. I wanted to bring it up with you guys, but I think that's the reason that we're really not going to dive into it. 
because I understand kind of the predicament that she's in and I can empathize with her a bit. I hope this isn't like a long-term thing for her. You know, I don't like that she's family vlogging. I don't like that she's participating in MLMs, but you also have to understand the Mormon church kind of set her up this way. Yeah. Like she did everything right by Mormon church standards. She, you know, she went, she actually went on a mission. She got married in the temple. She married, you know, a man who she truly loved and she had a bunch of kids and she stayed faithful and she goes to the temple and she's very religious. And so she, yeah, she was living upright by having a bunch of kids because when you get sealed in the temple, they tell you go forth and multiply. And that means more than one generally. Yeah. So, so yeah. And she got set up like this. She's in between the Mormon church and theology telling her to have all these kids and the lack of support systems in the United States where women build a life and a career raising kids and taking care of homes and then when the rug gets pulled out from under them for whatever reason they have nothing to fall back on and then yeah. to pile on top of that all of these these fundamentalists and all these fucking freaks on the internet are like oh yeah this is what happens when you don't have a good father figure that you grow up like a like a little wussy or what i don't even know honestly i see the most despicable shit on like facebook reels and stuff people who just have to insert themselves into the the space with no nuance like oh today's use are, are so fucked up and what whatnot this is literally the system we're built we've built and are continuing to bolster with all the lack of family planning, education, and access that we're, we're having. And then people end up in situations like this. And who are the people that are suffering? The very people that you're red faced screaming at the top of your lungs to save. Save the kids, save the kids. And then we don't do anything about it. So yeah, it, it would be punching down and so I feel like this is kind of the perfect example of how Mormonism sets women up to not be successful in these types of situations. Cause it's not just if your husband leaves you, like what if, you know, what if you become a widow, right? Like yeah. it doesn't really set them up to have any kind of cushioning for what comes next. Like if something horrible happened. Um, and so I don't think we're going to cover her for these reasons. And I, you know, I hope this is just a temporary thing for her and she doesn't stick to family vlogging. But, you know, when you have eight kids and you're on your own and you have something that's paying the bills. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I can really entirely fault her for that. She didn't it's choose the, to be a single mom. It's the classic. Would you steal bread to feed your family? Right. And I think that's kind of what she's doing. And it, it doesn't justify the fact that they were doing it before. Um and I hope, you know, hopefully she gets into a more financially stable position and she chooses not to do any of this later on. Um, who's to say? But, you know, it's just kind of, I think we're just kind of going to leave her be. And I, you know, I, I don't have any ill will towards her. I hope. I, it sounds like she has a lot of support. Like she has a lot of people online who support her. It sounds like her ward is very supportive. Like, this is when, I mean, ironically, even Mormonism solved this problem. And this is the perfect example of Mormonism creating the problem and also solving the problem. Yeah. Because in some sense, they are providing her support, right? Like, they're probably, I wouldn't be surprised <clears throat> if they were offering to help pay with, like, her house payment. Or, you know, they're doing, you know, food pantry stuff for her. Like, they, and she's got supportive ward people who are probably checking in on her all the time. Like, it's funny how we've kind of, like got that whole philosophy of like create the thing that solves the problem like mormonism creates the problem and then offers you a solution to said problem yeah. they want to be the the saviors to the the people that they have wronged <laughs> the industrial messiah complex <laughs> yeah so you know i'll leave it at that you know she has a she started a podcast now where she's interviewing like other people who are like doing similar things that are like really hard and so i think she's trying to find other ways to to make money and yeah, I'd much rather support that than yeah so her podcast i think is called the julie jepson podcast um you know she's got venmo and stuff on her instagram if you feel so inclined they're 
family account now is called the Big Family Jewels. So if you feel inclined to do something, I'm not going to yes, say Carolyn. don't. Um, because I do, I do really feel for her. She's been put in the shittiest position yeah. imaginable. Yeah, and inevitably there are going to be people, like, be people like, why doesn't she just go and get a job? She has eight fucking kids. She probably really There's realistically can't. How? <laughs> yeah, and her kids are involved in many uh, like after school activities, like plentiful yeah. amounts, and so like all she does is like move her kids around shepherd <laughs> yeah like that's literally all she does like half the time like and then taking care of you know it's like the dynamic of it's one of the reasons we don't want more than one kid because it's kind of like a domino effect you know one of her kids gets sick at school well guess what she's got eight sick kids now and she has yeah and not at the same time it will be over the course of an entire week yeah yeah he has Did not been as communicated as far as i know does he have anything going on in the socials i looked he's on tiktok posting very normal things like it's like cringy but it's like he's kind of trying to be relevant and build a following he performed at some concerts and like a tour recently so he's been doing his music it appeal it appears and in all honesty i feel like over the past even leading up to us leaving the church it seemed like he kind of had fallen off like i bit. hadn't heard too much about him in a while i remember the church is quiet about excommunication sometimes Almost always, they almost never make a uh, a statement. K Fuki, welcome to the terrestrial kingdom. What the hell? It pulled up for me. That's weird. Oh, just if a you go to the error. one on the right, top right, mm -hmm. that one. He put on a... I couldn't He's figure out what, what was going on with his eyes. He put on a blue eye filter. He also said that he was on the throne when he performed this lovely song. Why would he... I'm going to put it on mute, but everybody needs to see this real quick because that is pretty cringe. So, like, I, I don't know what's happening here, but it's it's interesting. A choice. god -fidence. He looks older. That's a corny-ass brand. So, we love his voice, but yeah, he's kind of being a dickhead lately. Yeah, I, if what is if what Julie says is, is true is happening, then is he recording videos in the roles? Yeah, I watched oh, this. God. You're not ready for the ending of that it either. Is so just watch for the rest of it. If you're recording videos in your roles and your kids are possibly going without food, yeah, this is why this is a problem. We're this listening is... in silence because there's. Copyrighted, like music. copyrighted music what the fuck yeah that's what i said larry king and gary's wife from parks and rec what's her name in poor taste yeah not really cute especially when your kids are part of your brand yeah so he's talented as hell i i got respect for him in the talent department but i don't know what is going like i i truly don't know a scenario that would cause you to like up and leave your kids if what julie is saying is true like i i just don't get it yeah because there's eight of them and they're all suffering in large magnitude by not having a parent who was involved in their lives well he's just trying to be like mormon god absent maybe in his children's lives <laughs> maybe yeah so i don't know what that whole situation was but i ran across that and was like oh larry king okay yeah i don't know what he thinks people will think he like in people in julie's comments have do not hold back with this man they, they roast this man to to no end and it, i mean if what she's saying is true it, it's valid because you just peaced out and abandoned your wife and kids like what the hell yeah so anyway so that's that with julie i don't think we're going to cover her in the future if something changes maybe there will be another conversation but for right now i think we're just going to leave her be because she's in a really shitty situation and i am not wanting to be somebody who piles on to that 
So, I mean, I know she's Mormon and I know she's still very much Mormon, but she's still a human being and, you know, she's absolutely going through it right now. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know how I would do it with single parenting one child. Like, I have mad respect for people who are put in positions where they have to single parent. I can't imagine, let alone eight. Yeah. So. Uh, Can the kids not get child support? There has to be legal proceedings yeah. which are ongoing according to julie for ov- over a year now so there's not been anything going on and like jordan was just looking at the court documents and they had subpoenaed like so much shit um so we're talking like revenue from the church from deseret book and all his royalty all his royalty yeah all all that kind of shit Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with child support. I don't know if there's like a temporary child support thing that can be filed while divorce stuff is ongoing. Again, you know, legal stuff is not my field. Yeah. So somebody says until they're legally divorced, she can't get child support, which that's just shitty if he's extending this out for that reason. Yeah. Um, But I mean, his parents, his parents, his children won't forget this. And that's the really unfortunate part about this is they won't ever forget. Night, Elizabeth. Yeah. Luckily, I have Jordan because this is not... This is not a field that I am experiencing. My parents, bless their heart, they're still together. (laughs) Yeah. And mine divorced very early on. And so, unfortunately, and this is all being documented, for bad or for good, her children will all be able to look back on this footage. Which, you know, who's to say how that will feel? Hopefully she will get to a place where she can remove it. She doesn't ever... I mean, truly, she... You can tell she's emotional about it and you can tell like she's very hurt and she's very wounded and she loves him very much. But she really, truly, from what the stuff from I've seen of her doesn't really speak ill of him, which would take a lot for me as a person to not absolutely drag him. You know, even being the love of my life, like you just up and abandon your kids like that, like the restraint that she has if she's truly not talking about him in an ill manner with her kids which i hope she's not because this is like as a therapist i always counsel parents to not talk ill of the other partner no matter what no matter what your personal feelings are in front of your children and so it's like i got mad respect if if that's the case and some parents i'm not an advocate for people who to stay married when they're not happy there are people who there are people plenty of people who i worked with who wish their parents would have divorced because they're miserable now or they were miserable then or they waited too long like not every marriage is like meant to stay together you know it's unfortunate but staying together for the kids isn't really beneficial for the kids in most cases that's tough so so yeah that's our status on that if you can't co-parent when you're in a relationship then you're probably not gonna do very well (laughs) Well, just the emotional whiplash of like everything yeah, potentially seriously. like if truly it was a shock like i can't imagine the emotional whiplash of coping with that so anyways that's the that's update that. that i'll give on that and i think that's all we'll do um just to bring it back around we probably will please that one guy because we're bringing business to the end did you have anything else um no i don't think so this time that took a lot longer than i thought it was i've it's kind of figuring it was going to be short stream (laughs) tonight but that's like impossible for us i know we're so long-winded and obnoxious just kidding Uh, a few things to round out the night um i've seen some people in the chat talking about the jubilee video if you missed the beginning we said we were going to do a recorded um episode probably next week i'm thinking next week just because it'll be still relevant at that point so fear not bye abby and then also jordan and i jordan had brought up and you know after the beginning of this stream (laughs) uh having a subreddit because we do get a lot of people sending us stuff at on, on the Instagram and, and it gets lost in DMs. Yeah, DMs is really hard to keep track of. There's a participants feature. Oh, okay, I I remember seeing. I looked at his chat history and I was like, oh god. Um. So 
I don't know, would it be a terrible idea to start a subreddit? That way submissions and like information is there. Like if somebody, if there's something going on and somebody has a link to that, it would be more beneficial than somebody DMing us and they don't have a link. They just have a tidbit of information and then we got to go hunt down things or whatever. And then maybe you will all feel more hurt. I hope nobody feels like we're just like ignoring them or anything like that. It's just a lot to keep track of. And Yeah. We have a feedback like spot in the Discord, but I know a lot of people don't use Discord or are massively confused by it. That includes yeah. me. Um, so I know that's not people's ideal. Um, but I was curious... We were curious on you guys. Yeah. Thoughts. And then everybody from or the haters from the Jordan page subreddit can come over <laughs> and they can head, hate on our subreddit. <laughs> if that ain't poetic justice, I don't know what it is. Alicia, hopefully I said that right. I would love that. Subreddit would be cool. Subreddit would be good. Okay. Subreddit would be cool. Okay. Yeah. Discord can so be we'll very look overwhelming. Into that. Honestly, I, I'm i not in the this Discord very often because of how overwhelming it is for me. Being someone who was a late adopter for Discord fucking sucks. <laughs> I feel so lost all the time. Yeah, we're frequently having to make changes and update things, and it, Discord just isn't everybody's yeah, cup of tea. By so. Rebecca. Name it Jordy, Name it Jordy and, and Mickey. Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. If they do, they'll have to face me. It will. Fair sage. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Allows, I mean, if you know, if you've been watching us long enough, you know that we're regular H3 podcast watchers. And the way that they have the subreddit and everything, it just is nice. Because they just get all like a bunch of ideas from there. Yeah. So I have like 90% of the Discord channels hidden. That's that's fair, honestly. I just catch streams totally while my kids are fighting sleep in my lap. <laughs> I wish um, sometimes. Am I claiming any track <laughs> in the tortured poets department? Um, I'm I claiming would... Fortnite. Fortnite with Post I... <laughs> Malone is pretty solid. Um, the If it doesn't come out like... Number one victory warrior. Oh my yeah, god, stop. To get down. Um I can fix him. <laughs> no, really I can. I think would be a solid one for me. That one speaks to me. Um it, it's feeling like, you know, the tortured whimsical breakup album, and I am I'm ready for it. I'm so ready for it. I'm also ready for rep, but you know, we can't all get what we want at the same time, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh quick. Hannah no. <laughs> <laughs> Quentin, oh, I I am very well versed in the Reddit game. I am absolutely bloodthirsty on Reddit, so <laughs> I, I know exactly what I'm up against. I don't really, but I understand the possible benefits of it. So, Caroline was saying I don't understand the point of Discord, but then and I'm in my elderly millennial area era, but she could also. Finish the line with just took out Tomato Town. Girl. You are not that old. Don't worry. Yes. Discord can't wait just for the doesn't Joe speak team. to you. You definitely have the ability. Um so yeah, I was also hoping for rip, but I'm not gonna I'm not mad about a new album. I'm not mad about a new album. So Okay, so I guess that's yes to the subreddit and uh i really hope for knife to my mental game. health most likely if uh if post malone is on the track he might make a reference i don't feel like that is a very tailored thing to do but post malone would definitely get in there with what we're with what we're needing also yeah, pal world Mel malane or is it melanie wait i would say melanie melanie like pal world are we fucking with pal world Jordan was suggesting it. It, it, and I have Games Pass, so I might check it out. Because I've just been playing Pokemon Yellow. I got one of those little emulator guys. <laughs> we don't get a mother skin in the game. <laughs> Can you imagine? Wait, Taylor what? Taylor Swift skin in Fortnite. 
Dude. Maybe I'd play Fortnite. Nicki Minaj. Oh, yeah. By the way, fuck Nicki Minaj. That holds girly chill. debacle is girly, not chill. going well. Um, Was Some in Call were, of Duty, so. Yeah, that's true. Some people were saying that Power World is like cute, and then other people have told me that it's like deranged. And there's like I think it's no equal in between. Parts. <laughs> oh, it is Mulane. Okay. Mulane? Oh, okay. I'm glad you clarified. Because I, I totally would have said I, Melanie. <laughs> My Jordan has a more uh, English pronunciation, and I'm open to yeah. non-standard because I speak Spanish. Power World is dope. Okay, we don't want the Barb's to come after us. Okay, yeah, seriously, oh, I'm yeah. not trying to get docked. Seriously, that shit is just sorry, Barb's. Yeah, there's this there's this full of hell song that uh, one of the lines is where the Barb's have dug in, and I always picture like <laughs> a bunch of Barb's in the fucking trenches, like fighting off the Megan the Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> Rory, we appreciate you. We're so glad you're a member here. We oh, yeah, love it. Pokemon Yellow. I love Pokemon Yellow so much. So I I've, I've been playing Pokemon, so maybe, Power World I'm open to. Maybe you start playing it tonight and we can experiment. Yeah, I I did see it's only like a six gig download, so I could okay. download it and play it tonight. But you Dude, have to game... do it in a cute way, not a deranged way. I mean, we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it depends. There there's also lines shout out to, to the drawn. shout out to uh Cult of the Lamb with the sex update. I got we'll to replay Cult of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. Now. Yeah. They called it um cuz I just I got snubbed. My brother was going to play something with me and then I was waiting on him for like an hour so I was just So he around. watched the Eras tour with me and my best friend instead. Yeah. So um <laughs> for the second time I went into Cult of the Lamb and I'd, I saw that they had updated it and it was like Cult of the Lamb, Sins of the Flesh. I was like, I can't believe they did it. <laughs> Hannah will probably message you. They did it. What did Hannah say? She has 55 hours on the damn game. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I love it. Oh, what I was going to say about Pokemon <laughs> Yellow, fucking keep derailing me. Sorry. Game Freak is so wrong for putting gambling in that stupid game. <laughs> Why do we have to put gambling in things now? Seriously. Well, they took, they ended up in other iterations of the game they took that out because it's wrong i see i did it the right way but i did it on fast forward just to get the porygon starting out with 50 coins you have to get 9999 9, coins it would take a kid in game time six hours to grind out those coins if he had the good strategy like i was using that's not accounting for time where you have to turn off the console and reset the game and load back in and restart it so you have the, the good RNG again. That shit was crazy. Yeah, the gambling, it was so wild. And also, you can't even get all, you can't fill out the Pokedex without trading. You have to have another copy of the game and another Game Boy in order to fill out the Pokedex. So this that was This is like another garbage. language to me, Caroline. Don't even. Now Pokemon Yellow. Yes, I played Pokemon Yellow like a thousand times. I remember. I played it on an emulator on my Android phone in my Calc BC class my senior year of high school. <laughs> we got an email from a gambling company offering to sponsor us the other day. I know. And that was a it's fat. Crazy. No. I'm not doing that. I'm not trying to be. Remember when awesome. Adventure Games had some kind of fishing game, mini game? I missed those. Seriously, that was the huge hole in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom because there was no like legit fishing minigame like you could bait them and pick them out of the water i want the one where you make fun. a zoo you need to make a zoo oh what's that one called i think it's like zoo world or something real creative in here <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i can't remember um it's not gambling it's engagement <laughs> which is crazy because i am not somebody who could gamble i could never be okay with putting money in and that is the style of entertainment that I get out of it. Potentially losing a lot of money. Zoo Tycoon, thank you. Or no, Planet Zoo, Zoo. Zoo Tycoon's the old one. Planet Zoo, maybe. There's a new one. There's now. a newer one. Should we look? Is it Planet Zoo? See, I love Zoo Tycoon as a kid and somebody mentioned that there was another, like a newer one. Yeah, Planet Zoo. It's like an updated one. Oh, okay. I love Stardew oh, it's a Valley. Console game. 
but I hate fishing in Stardew Valley. What's it on? So you're dude. I'm you're the fishing master on Stardew Valley. I'm so he good. Is. I can't do it. When Jordan had to do those ones in the the community center, I would always do it. Yeah, because I'm a fucking yeah. G. I'd always have McKay to make most most of the center. time. I can get all of the all that one filled out in the first year. See, this is like look at how cute. Okay, like, there's console. beefy lows. Is it out on console? I thought I saw that oh, it was, was on a pre-order pre-order for console, but it's on PC. Oh, it's it's already available on PC. Yeah. Okay. Console releasing March 26th. How much does it cost on console? Sorry, I totally derailed this with my next thing. sim stream. Uh, we didn't do it last week because it was the second day of potty training and, and we were exhausted. Yeah, we were not about it. Oh, my God. This is so cute. Right. See, I told you. Um. Oh, this isn't even new. I've. It came out in like 2019. Yeah, I think. this isn't a new thing. So it's not buggy. Let's see Xbox store. Um, yeah, I love Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is a nice like. Oh, it's only 40 bucks. Oh, see, there you go. I love Harvest that's... Moon. I grew up playing Harvest Moon. Story of Seasons is the like Harvest Moon remake and it's actually really good. There's so much CC for Planet Zoo. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Pokemon friend code. Oh, I want Krispy Kreme. Is that for... Dude, that sounds so good. They need to have one over here. We don't even have, like, Duncan or anything over here. No, we don't. Stupid. We live in a uh, weird area. Friend code. Yeah, add Hannah on there. I don't know what a Pokemon friend code... I literally have only played Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Yellow. That's it. So I am planning on working up my way through uh, some of the other ones. Story of Seasons is adorable. Pokemon Go. Okay. There was this one that I was playing. Oh, I guess there was one mobile yes, game that I was Casey. playing Pokemon Duel for a little while, which was kind of fun. It needed some more fleshing out. There was always some cheesy fucking mons. I've been needing friends. My husband gets so tired of me Pokemon going. Oh, well. Yes, we also love cozy games. I played Webkins. I was a kid. I remember oh, doing that. Reb I never had Webkins. I was a pub club penguin. I did kid. club penguin too. Shout out to P club penguin. Parkitect anyone. My roommate drove I'm eight interested. hours to get Krispy Kreme for a guy. She had revelation that she needed to marry. <gasps> That's dedication. Skyrim. Solid. I need to go back to Skyrim. Architect on stream. Oh, it's Pokemon like Snap. roller coaster tycoon. <clears throat> we love that. Yep, Webkins and Neopets. I guess there's new stuff in the latest iteration of Skyrim, so I might need to play it again because of that. Because I remember seeing somebody posted on the Skyrim subreddit something like a a property that you can live in mm -hmm. that I had never seen before. I was completely bewildered i've got like a couple hundred hours on <laughs> skyrim miku uh, miku's headphone says fallout new vegas is the other cozy game i watched you play that and there is nothing is cozy about that so to me. cozy i don't know what it you're makes me about. depressed it's so cozy that it makes me wish <laughs> for a nuclear winter stop <laughs> <laughs> no. um anyways this is your reminder to make sure you're subscribed make sure you like this video make sure you watch our video tomorrow if i if you don't i'll cry um and make sure that you like it and drop a comment on it because that helps us in the algorithm yeah oh we have to play new vegas on stream because it has mormons in it oh well there you go i forgot about that so there you go there's your reminder for those things um I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you. I think that was it. I think that's it. I'm hungry. It's time for me to go chow down on some banana pudding. The mods, some of them have seen it already, and Hannah says it's really good, so that means you have to watch it. What? Our video. Oh, the one from yesterday. Oh, that the also br tomorrow. makes... Yeah, I don't, I don't know why I said yesterday. That brings 
up again. I have bloopers uploaded. I'm going to post them for the patrons and the members after this. So, right now? Yes. Right now. We go upstairs, get some grub, and that's what I'm going to be doing. So watch out for bloopers. Yep. And they're funny because the Bologna cats would going leave us alone. Crazy the whole time. Oh, the and at the end of tomorrow's video, Tom makes Tom's whiskers and snout make an appearance. I literally could not cut it out we because I didn't in. make another take. No, nope. that was the lone take. I was like, we well, I guess on. everybody's oh, getting of. one blooper. So, oh, Baloney's ears were burning. Anyway, sorry for the long uh, tale to this, but we love you. You're amazing. Baloney loves you. Don't knock that over, please. <laughs> uh, show Babby. We hope to see you on Thursday. Thursday. But we'll see you tomorrow first. And yeah, join us tomorrow for the live chat if you so please. Anyway, grid bless you all. Sims tomorrow. Uh, grid bless, bless your lives and grid night. Boom.